Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing a potential resolution to a strange mystery from approximately 100 years ago. The mystery discovered in Antarctica back in 1911. And here let's just start with what exactly this is and what was discovered here. It starts with the British expedition to Antarctica by these brave but somewhat exhausted individuals you see on this picture. This was known as the Terra Nova expedition. And during the expedition, while exploring the coast of Antarctica, the British geologist Thomas Taylor made a somewhat strange discovery at the bottom of one of the largest glaciers in Antarctica. Let's jump to this location right now, just so you can see it from outer space. So it's somewhere right here, and it's a location known as the Blood Falls. You can see it right in this area. Now this doesn't actually look that impressive, even though this is a pretty large area. This is approximately half a kilometer in size, but from the ground it looked like this. Now that's an unusual sight. There's a reason it's called Blood Falls. It literally looks like something is bleeding from the ice itself. And it's been doing this for a very, very long time. This unusual discharge is coming from within ice and is literally turning the water and everything around it completely red. And although the initial assumption was that it was maybe some kind of a bacteria or possibly some kind of a red algae able to produce these colors, none of the samples collected in 1911 revealed anything under the microscope. And so for many, many years this remained a bit of a mystery until further chemical analysis determined that the color itself seems to be coming from some kind of an oxidized iron. Or I guess the similar phenomenon to why Mars is red as well. But the actual origin of all of this and exactly what was happening here was not entirely clear up until extremely recently. And it's really this very recent study that as always you can find any description below that might have finally provided some certain answers but also provided some really intriguing discoveries in regards to the idea of astrobiology, looking for life outside of planet Earth. But I think here it's also important to understand what wasn't discovered in this case in some of the previous studies. Previously the red color was assumed to be a result of some kind of an iron-based mineral. Basically something similar to what we detect on Mars and essentially a collection of atoms arranged in a certain crystalline structure which then produces these specific colors. A lot of different types of iron crystals exist on the planet and they generally produce a lot of different colors. But none of the samples from this region contain any crystals that would be responsible for any kind of coloration. So it kind of remained a mystery of what exactly is happening here with the only assumption being that it must involve iron. On top of this, several other studies, like the one you see right here, definitively confirm that there's definitely some kind of an ancient microbial population living underneath this glacier that seems to be responsible for whatever is causing the color. And although the actual coloration was still a bit mysterious, some of the bacteria that might be responsible for this was eventually discovered a few years ago. A lot of these belong to the genus of bacteria known as Marinobacter. They seem to prefer to exist in relatively cold conditions of minus 7 degrees Celsius or 19 Fahrenheit and in very salty conditions with at least 8% sodium chloride. We usually refer to these as halophiles or bacteria that like salt. But they were also heterotrophic, suggesting that they were basically producing their own food right there on site, but with no sunlight, with nothing else. And here the suggestion was that they must use some kind of an unusual sulfate-based respiration mixed with the ions of iron to metabolize a lot of organic matter that was trapped around them. Which, if correct, would be the first time such an unusual reaction has ever been observed. And as a kind of a side product, or I guess as basically poop, they would produce this. So for the lack of better words, this right here could be bacterial poop. And they've actually discovered at least 17 different species of bacteria living there with many never seen before. But more importantly, the implication here was that these little guys were trapped in this region for a very, very long time. As a matter of fact, they might have actually been here trapped underneath this ice for up to 2 million years representing a kind of a time capsule right here on planet Earth with these strange bacteria evolving in a completely isolated environment and producing all of these reactions we've never seen before. Which doesn't just provide us with an explanation for what we might find on planets like Mars, but it also provides an explanation for a period on the planet that we refer to as Snowball Earth. The period when the planet was pretty much entirely covered by ice and the period during which life has also survived, but we're just not entirely sure how. This though kind of showed us how it could have survived and what might have happened back in the days. But this still did not explain what's actually physically causing the color, even though it must have been some kind of iron, and more importantly, why no study so far has definitively discovered either the source of the color 
or the bacteria inside these samples that could have been responsible for making this happen, because these bacteria were only discovered when the scientists used the probe to try to pick them up from underneath the glacier, collecting these samples directly. But because no minerals were discovered in any of these samples, it was still a bit mysterious and somewhat unusual. But the recent study might have resolved all of this once and for all. With all of this discovered by using advanced electron microscopy that can essentially see minute particles, just nanometers in size. In a nutshell, what they discovered was that, instead of minerals, these were actually nanospheres. Tiny formations that contain a lot of iron that were extremely small in size, but were in no way minerals or crystals. Which is precisely why nothing was discovered by previous studies, and why all of this required advanced microscopes in order to finally see what's happening inside. But except for iron, they actually discovered a lot of other stuff. There's silicon, calcium, aluminium, sodium, and it's really the combination of all of this that potentially causes these unusual formations to then turn kind of red. So basically, it's not really just iron after all. It's these unusual nanospheres containing a lot of other stuff that when exposed to oxygen and sunlight, then become red. But because these particles are so tiny, none of the previous studies were able to discover them. None of this would be visible under a typical microscope or even using some of the simpler techniques. But all of this most likely produced by various bacteria present underneath the glacier. So basically this is a definitive biosignature. And that's the important part of the discovery for astrobiology. One major implication from this is that we might actually have a lot of trouble finding any signs of life on other planets, including of course Mars. We currently don't have electron microscopes on Mars, and there's no way to conduct these advanced studies unless we physically conduct these studies on site or bring some of the samples back to Earth. And bringing a massive electron microscope to Mars is not really going to be that easy. And so that basically suggests that we might actually not find any signs of life on Mars using modern technology that's currently present on Mars, because according to the scientists from previous studies, if we were to actually take one of the Martian rovers and bring it to Antarctica right now, or if we had one of these rovers explore this area, they would unlikely to find anything here either. These nano-sized particles are so tiny that it would be practically impossible to identify anything in them. And so the assumption that we're going to discover some kind of a mineral on Mars potentially produced by life here currently does not have a lot of merit. As the study right here shows us, even a bacteria-rich sample right here on Earth took us over a hundred years to finally confirm and to finally identify and explain using modern advanced microscopy. And so the only way we can definitively discover something here is by obviously waiting for those samples from the Mars return mission to finally bring something back that can then be studied on Earth in a lot of detail. But this is not going to happen for a pretty long time, which means that we might not find anything on Mars until then. Nevertheless, the discovery and the explanation for this unusual habitat right here underneath this glacier that must have not changed for millions of years is actually a pretty exciting opportunity for a lot of NASA astrobiology studies because this is pretty much as extreme as it gets when it comes to unusual life out there. And as a matter of fact, a lot of the conditions here are somewhat similar to what we do find on various moons in the solar system. With the bacteria in this case protected from various types of radiation and even from various types of exposure for what seems to be millions of years. And so I guess only time will tell what exactly we're going to learn from all of this and what's going to be discovered here in the next few years. But until those future discoveries, it's still pretty exciting to know that we finally kind of understand what's happening in this unusual formation and of course understand the relationship between all of this coloration and the life underneath. But I'm sure more will be discovered in the next few years because it looks like many of these studies have only now started to come out discovering a lot of really cool stuff. And so until future discoveries from the blood falls, check out some of the previous videos on a similar topic in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.